Okay, good evening. This is the uh, Public Health and Safety Committee meeting for this September 25th. We have three more months till Christmas, by the way. <laughs> Sitting here this evening, I have Commissioner Nick Skull and Commissioner Kip McFarland. Also in attendance, we have our Township Manager, Matt Kalin, his assistant, Randy Sago, and our solicitor. Listener Sean, Sean, Sean Kilkenny. Welcome, everyone. First, I want to ask my esteemed colleagues and the commissioner board if they would approve the meeting, the minutes from May, July the 24th. I'm good with them. Yes. I approve. You approve? Okay. The minutes should be stricken and written. Thank you very much. Now we'll have our monthly reports, starting with Chief Block. Chief Block. Thank you, Commissioner Whiting. Good evening. It's a pleasure to uh, provide and present the uh, August 2023 monthly report for the police department. Uh, the Upper Moreland Police Department responded to 1,324 calls for service in the month of August of 2023. This brings us uh, total calls for year to date to 10,464. On our outlying years, um, August to 2022, we were at 10,537 calls. August of 2021, we were at 9,370 calls. In August of 2020, 9,191 calls. The overall difference between August of 2020 and August of 2023 is a 14% increase in the call volume. The following part one crimes were reported and investigated by the police department in August of 2023. There was one aggravated assault, three burglaries with two cleared by an arrest, three auto thefts, 55 theft offenses with 25 of those clears by, cleared by an arrest. The following part two crimes were reported and investigated by the police department in August. One disorderly conduct offense, which was cleared by an arrest. Two narcotics offenses that were cleared by arrest. Three public intoxication offenses cleared by an arrest. And 20 other crimes that were committed and cleared by an arrest. The patrol division conducted the following proactive measures. There were 432 vehicle investigations. 63 hazardous traffic violations, 142 non-hazardous traffic violations, one parking citation and one warning was issued. There were 17 homeless contacts throughout the township. There were 10 DUI investigations. And all 10 investigations and arrests occurred between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. Our traffic and highway safety unit uh, conducted the following uh, activities during the month of August. They had 61 calls for service, 15 traffic and parking issues, four citizens' concerns, two directed patrols, four abandoned vehicle investigations, 153 traffic stops, motor vehicle investigations, 88 warnings, 34 hazardous traffic citations were issued, 87 non-hazardous traffic citations were issued. There were 30 bus patrol violations. One arrest, and there were three motor uh, carrier uh, inspections, uh, inspections that occurred. Uh, two vehicles were taken out of service and one driver was taken out of service for safety reasons. Our Detective Bureau CID opened 26 new cases in the month of August 2023. There's one theft investigation, one sex offense investigation, two burglary investigations, two juvenile investigations, two auto theft investigations, uh, two threat uh, investigations, two personal injury investigations, two fraud investigations, three child line investigations, three fire investigations, and three death investigations. The Detective Bureau executed the following arrest and search warrants during the month of August. There were eight arrest warrants that were executed. One was for the violation of a Uniform Firearms uh, Act, uh, the uh, Uniform Firearms um, Act that was a warrant. One aggravated assault warrant, one hit and run warrant, one narcotics warrant, two burglary warrants, and two theft warrants. There were four search warrants that were issued and executed. One was for bank and financial records. One was for a Google account record. One was for a DNA sample. And one was for a residential search warrant. A uh, couple of notable investigations uh, for the Detective Bureau and CID. On Saturday, August 5th, Detective Gallagher and Officer Rossetti initiated an investigation into a founded overnight commercial burglary at Surplus Liquidators on Maryland Road. Through the, in, the interview of the owner, it was discovered that his business had been burglarized two additional times in July of 2023, where it was not reported to the police department. The owner of the business was able to identify the actor by reviewing uh, the store video 
uh, security video forensic evidence was recovered from the scene and the actor was quickly identified and arrested. Uh, an arrest warrant was obtained. The offender was a previous employee of the business and was taken into custody at his home in Philadelphia without incident by our detectives in Philadelphia police. Uh, we assisted the uh, Montgomery County Detective Bureau with the Gun Violence uh, Task Force, which Officer, or I'm sorry, Detective Mark Bolden is a member of. There was a gun violence or a gun show uh, in the Oaks uh, section of the county. Detective Bolden was detailed out to assist to make sure that there were no straw purchases uh, being uh, made at that. Uh, if you recall, back in February of 2023, I reported that the Luke Oil at Moreland and Fitzwatertown Road um, experienced a robbery. Detective Gallagher, and at the time, Detective Smith responded to that scene uh, and conducted the investigation into the robbery. As part of the investigation, security video footage was recovered from the business, and a short time after the robbery, Upper Dublin police responded to the Dresher area of their township for a reported vehicle theft. It was determined that the vehicle theft used at the Luke Oil robbery was left in Upper Dublin Township at the location of the reported stolen vehicle. Detective Gallagher was able to forensically process the vehicle that was recovered in Upper Dublin. Detective Gallagher was also able to recover an item of evidence that was known to have been possessed by the offender while inside the Luke Oil when committing the robbery. This item of evidence was processed for DNA and submitted to the Pennsylvania State Police Forensics Lab. We were notified um, by the Pennsylvania State Police Forensic Forensics Lab, the DNA division, um, that they were able to obtain a lead in the CODIS, which is the DNA database. Um, this lead provided investigators with the identification of the offender, which was verified by photographs and obtained from the business security camera. And the six-month investigation had concluded with criminal charges being filed against the offender. So there was a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of expertise put into this um, where we were able to clear a robbery. So it was a job well done, once again, by our detective and CID division. Um, the part one overview for uh, crime statistics for burglaries. In 2023, we've had 18 burglaries year to date. Uh, same time in 2022, there were 15 burglaries year to date. In 2021, there were nine burglaries as well as 2029 burglaries, robbery offenses. To date, there's been 11 robbery uh, offenses reported with 11 clearances. There were two robberies for the same period in 2022, six robberies in the same period in 2021, and seven robberies in 2020. All robberies remain under investigation by the Detective Bureau. And the thefts, including retail theft year to date, are a total 383 with 190 clearances. And last, I do have, uh, I want to remind the public that our third annual Faith in Blue will be happening on Saturday, October 7th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. rain or shine at the Willow Grove YMCA 3300 Davidsville Road. We encourage everyone to come out. There will be activities for children, adults, food trucks. There'll be vendors, fire trucks, canine displays, peace poles, dedication, uh, and guest speakers. And this year, event is dedicated to Fallen Temple Police Officer uh, Sergeant Christopher Fitzgerald, who was uh, murdered in the line of duty earlier this year. Commissioner Whiting, that completes my report. Are there any questions? Thank you. We have any commissioner comments? Is that all? The <laughs> 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 night's young. <laughs> Crime is never rest. Uh, any public comments? Chief Clay. Lock. I no. just, I just wanted that. Uh, and canine, canine Maximus, uh, along with his handless officer Snyder, uh, and then uh, Snyder received a serious arm injury. Was he bitten by the dog? No, Officer Rems. <laughs> he was he was at training, and when they were doing one of the exercises, he actually sustained an injury to his arm. It wasn't it wasn't from from the canine. It was one of the devices he was using. So he's on the mend. Hopefully, he'll be back within the next. Month or two. I'm glad here. Right. Any other public comments? No? Okay. Chief Glassman, please. Thank you, Commissioner. Good evening, Commissioners. My pleasure to, to present to you the August 2023 Fire Department report. We responded to 96 total calls, 73 fire calls, 23 EMS calls. We completed 73 fire permit inspections. Collected three thousand sixty-five dollars. The total amount collected for the year was fourteen thousand five hundred and forty. 
There are five fire marshals inspections or investigations and one civilian injury. There was a smoke inhalation injury. A significant incident. On August 1st, there was an extrication right out front of the township building from a motor vehicle accident. On August 2nd, there was a church uh, house fire at 28 Church Street on the porch. I attached a couple pictures from that one. On August 8th, you may recall last meeting, we recognized some young kids that were riding along the trail in the park and got hit with a tree. Just as a matter of record, the fire department was on location in 61 seconds from receiving that call to attend to the child for his injuries while second alarmers responded coming from a greater distance because they were on another call. So I just wanted to make that point that they were there really quick to attend to that child. On August 9th, we had a kitchen fire at Rowan Acres Apartments, 300 Horsham Road. You have a picture of that in there. And there's actually a thank you card at the end of the report from the mother. Uh, while they were at the fire, it was a hot day and the firefighters got together and bought ice cream for the four kids that were at, at the residence from the ice cream truck that came by. On August 9th, there was a commercial vehicle fire, a tractor portion of a tractor trailer was on fire. That's where we got the injury from. The driver of the vehicle got uh, some minor smoke inhalation at 1706 East County Line Road. August 21st, there was a motor vehicle accident that required extrication at Davisville and Moreland. And on 828 at 211 Fern, luckily it was only an unattended cooking incident with a smoke incident, but we were there in under two minutes to mitigate that. And we all spent the next couple days looking for the dog who got out, Commissioner Valenza. Um, community oriented events. There were three events with 31 people attending. Fire service training was 31 personnel attended for 81 hours. Also on August or October 5th at the firehouse at seven o'clock at night, it's uh, fire prevention week and we'll have a little fire prevention activities for the family. Everybody can come out and see the firehouse and say hello to the firefighters. And that completes my report. Uh, now, one other thing. On the emergency management side, you might notice I was awarded my municipal coordinator associate. Uh, there's a letter from the director of Pima that entailed 17 different classes that I completed in the last year. And Chief Block accompanied me to the firehouse to get my certificate. And it was forwarded to Megan De Laurentiis in my personnel file. So I'm duly certified for the next five years. And that completes my report. Congratulations. Notice he said he's duly certified. <laughs> duly certified. Correct. Congratulations. Uh, do we have any questions? Commissioner, comments for Chief Glassman? <clears throat> any public comments for Chief Glassman? Thank you, Chief, for all you do. Thank you. Next, we'll have from Ken Davison, our EMT. Ken? Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, in your written reports, I have both June and July's call statistics. Uh, nothing unusual there. Uh, total calls in June were 298, total calls in July were 370, uh, transports in July were 224, in June were 179. Again, the lion's share, those are transported to Abington Jefferson Hospital uh, with a few others going elsewhere and now having a children's hospital right there in King of Prussia is very convenient for us. We've been able to transport some patients there uh, as opposed to having to go downtown. Uh, I did list for you again in July, our high utilization facilities. We're making some progress with that. I did meet with the township manager and discussed it briefly. Um, we've been having particular success with uh, the, t the first facility listed there, Garden Springs. We've met with them a couple times uh, and are working with their staff on some strategies to reduce some of the uh, 911 calls that maybe could be handled by transport services. So we're making progress there. Both uh, July and August were no naloxone administration by EMS. Again, my monthly disclaimer, that doesn't mean naloxone wasn't given. It just means if it was given, it was given prior to arrival, either by bystanders, uh, police officers, or the fire department prior to EMS arriving. Our staffing for July and August 2023, uh, certainly better than it was in 2022, but still not back up to uh, full staffing. Uh, in July of 2023, we had a downgrade to BLS 103 hours, and in August, downgrade to BLS 30 hours. Uh, and in July, we had a downgrade to no status at all 61 hours, and in August for 44 hours. Uh, again, better than 2022, but not really where we want to be. Uh, a couple of things notable, uh, we have seen an increase in calls for service involving some patients that appeared to be possibly homeless and living in the area of the center of town. A couple that we've had contact with multiple times. 
Uh, we've been working with our partners at the police department, the county mental health department, mobile crisis, and the county overdose team to try and match some of these patients to appropriate support services uh, and get them the actual care that they need as opposed to just transporting them to the hospital all the time. Uh, our fund drive in July, we received $9,960 from Upper One residents for subscriptions and 1370 as donations. We did take delivery of one of our new Ford F-550 Type 1 ambulances and it was placed in service in August. Uh, we expect to take delivery of its sister truck sometime in September, hopefully next week. Uh, we're waiting for a door lock to be installed at this point. Uh, the cost of these two trucks together is $461,216 and about $106,000 for the stretchers and loading systems. Uh, I did attach a copy of an article that appeared in the September 2023 PA Township News. This is a, a pretty good follow-up article. Uh, there was an article, it was five years ago in 2018, I apologize, that uh, spoke similarly of the EMS crisis and uh, everything that we're facing across the state. Uh, interestingly, I was talking to some of the other day and they went back and listed that there have been articles, I think, every year for the past uh, six years in there about it at some point. But this was a pretty good recap of everything and it really captures a lot of things that I've mentioned to you in the past couple of years uh, and gives you the perspective from EMS agencies across the state and some of the state leaders on the subject. Uh, we're in the process of submitting our formal request for funding consideration for 2024 through the manager's office in accordance with our service agreement. Our next EMT class will be November 1st through March 24th. We do still have some spaces available. And again, thanks to a generous grant from Penn Community Bank, we actually still have a couple of scholarship spots available. Uh, so if there's anybody interested in the EMT training class and interested in attending with a scholarship from Penn Community Bank, please visit our website, sars.org, or send us an email to info at maine.sars.org. Uh, and we'd be happy to get you enrolled in that class. Uh, that's my report. I'm happy to take any questions if you have them. Thank you, Ken. Any commissioner comments for Ken? Any public comments for Ken? Thank you very much. Hey. Under old business, we have done. But under new business, we have some new business. <laughs> and we're talking about parking uh, restrictions. Uh, Chief. Lot, would you please help us with that? Yes, Commissioner Whiting, thank you. Uh, so the first item under new business is under the Public Health and Safety Committee meeting. There was a study done at the intersection of New Street and Davisville Road. And as a result of that, Officer Meisner went out because there was traffic conflicts and pedestrian conflicts with vehicles that were parking uh, up upon the corner on the south, southwest corner specifically of New Street at Davisville, uh, which was creating site uh, uh, site distance issues as well as vehicles trying to access the street and being essentially hung up on Davisville Road. So at this time, uh, I'd like to make a uh, recommendation to the committee to forward this item to the Board of Commissioners to draft uh, and amend Township Ordinance Chapter 330, Vehicles and Traffic, Article Number 3, the parking regu regulations to include parking restrictions on the south side of New Street for a distance of 60 feet from the intersection of Davisville Road. This should clear up any conflict we were having. Okay. Uh, my fellow commissioners. On this, we just, we don't have to have a hearing or anything, do we? We changed all that so we can just do it in a... That is correct. Okay. I'm good with it. You're good with it? Nick? Sure. Yeah. Okay, Chief. Thank you. Uh, next item under new business is, uh, again, it's involving uh, proposed parking restrictions on Willowbrook Drive at Edge Hill Road. Uh, there was a study completed by Traffic Safety Officer Tom Sokolis, and the re reasoning on this, the way the topography of the roadway is, is vehicles are entering Willowbrook off of Edge Hill. They're parking up on the corner. So in order to uh, enhance public safety and less likelihood of having a crash on that corner, um, we would make the recommendation to uh, the committee to forward to the Board of Commissioners to draft um, an amendment uh, to Township Ordinance Chapter 330 Vehicles and Traffic, Article 3, parking regulations to include parking restrictions on the south side of Willowbrook Drive for a distance of 100 feet from the intersection of Edge Hill Road. This would clear up any uh, traffic issues with vehicles that are entering an exit off of Willowbrook. Again, I have no problems. Nick? Same as reasonable. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, item number three on the agenda um, was uh, brought to my attention by Commissioner Lockhart when she received a phone call from one of our towing vendors regarding the du duty tow rates uh, for Upper Moreland Township. So as a result of that, uh, Officer um, Andrew uh, Meisner of the Traffic Safety Unit uh, conducted a survey of the uh, surrounding townships and where the duty tow rates are. 
Uh, that was included in the uh, agenda summary. Uh, and those townships are Upper Dublin, Horsham, Lower Moreland, Hatboro, and Abington. And the last one on the bottom of the list itself is, is Upper Moreland Township. So that's before the committee for consideration um, to increase the towing rates. Currently in Upper Moreland Township, a uh, vehicle that is towed up to 10,000 pounds is charged $125 by the towing agency. The vehicle is 10,001 to 26,000 pounds. It's also at $125. Uh, vehicles that are over 26,000 pounds under our ordinance, there's no restriction on that. It's based on the towing company's records that are there. Uh, and then the storages that are uh, present in the ordinance, it's $45 a day for indoor, um, uh, or I'm sorry, out outdoor and $50 a day for indoor storage. Uh, our cleanup rate right now is $35 for the, uh, the streets. Uh, and under special circumstances, the towing company that's on duty may charge $80 an hour in lieu of $125 for a complex towing situation. for committee for consideration. I'm sure. Sure. Thank you, Commissioner Whiting. Um, Chief Blocks, thank you for organizing this and gathering all the information. As he said, I got a call from um, a towing company in, in my ward. Um, so one thing I just wanted to clarify, we regulate the fees, and this is a question, um, because we call the towing company, but some, but the Oh, res the vehicle owner is paying it. So that's why we re we regulate it in the first place. Correct, it would either we be the vehicle owner or possibly the insurance company, depending on the situation, if it's a motor vehicle crash. But okay. they are regulated by the township for police tows. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, I just thought it's, um, the call I got was that, you know, their costs have gone up, we haven't updated our fees. So it was very helpful that uh, Chief Block looked at the surrounding municipalities. Um, to me, it does look like we're low on some of these, um, but not all of them. So whatever you all think. Do you have a purpose? Yeah, I, so I think between the vehicles between 10,000 pounds and 26,000 um, pounds, we're definitely seems like we're consider considerably lower than other municipalities. Um, also, the storage storage column, we're at $45 a day, which is less than everybody else. Just want to have a market fee. Don't want to regulate anything below that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sean, what, what should we do with this, Sean? Um, I, I think uh, perhaps uh, she should review hearing Commissioner Whitehart's recommendations and uh, see if any of the adjustments is appropriate and you know, get his advice as well. Okay. So we'll get Kevin I, I certainly uh, have no basis in knowledge myself. <laughs> okay. Kevin? Excuse me, sir. Commissioner Spear. I'm sorry. Kevin's fine there, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm looking at the. Uh, the ones that were just mentioned, uh, the uh, 10,000 to 26,000 pounds. And then um, where does a heavy tow come in? Anything over the 26,000 pounds. So 10,000 to 26,000 pounds is not a heavy tow. Not according to the ordinance. So if you're getting you're getting into your tractor trailers or large trucks in those situations, that's that's what the, your ordinance regulates. Anything over ten thousand pounds, though, is is a uh, a class class one vehicle. Like you can't tow more than ten thousand pounds. No, they can they can tow it it's when you get over the twenty six thousand. When, when you're, you're getting into the larger commercial vehicles. By definition, if you're towing more than 10,000 pounds, it's it's a class one tow. I'll ask Officer Meisner to come up because he's one of my mix app officers. He'll be able to explain <laughs> it in detail so we can get the right information out. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Officer Meisner. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing very well. Um, there's a little bit of a just, it gets a little complicated once you start diving into the weeds here. 
about what the motor, what the uh, Pennsylvania Vehicle Code considers a commercial vehicle versus what Pennsylvania does federal side. As far as the ordinance goes, um, vehicles under 10,000 pounds are considered a regular light duty tow. A medium tow um, would be considered that 10,000 to 26,000 pound. Um, I think where the confusion is lying is how big of a truck do you need to tow something in that range? 10,000 to 26,000 pounds. A heavy tow, as it's commonly referred to, is like a heavy wrecker, something that's a, you need a class A CDL for. Um, that is not this range necessarily. You could, you could use it. Well, 10,000 to 26,000 pounds. You, you can tow that without a, a class one license. Class A CDL is what you're referring to? Yes, you can in certain instances. I have that license. Okay. And I'm told that I cannot tow anything of, you know, I, it, 10 thousand pounds of a tow put you in that category I can get in a without a class a CDL any one of us could jump in a 25,999 pound drive the box truck to drive the vehicle yes. correct but you can't hitch up anything that weighs more than 10 thousand pounds you can throw it on top of the tow truck and it's one vehicle okay I agree so that's where that's where this comes in okay so there are triaxle tow trucks if you put a 12,000 pound rollback tow truck, uh, I'm sorry, you put a 12,000 pound pickup truck. That's a substantial pickup truck. Oh. It's, a, it's a medium sized tow. We, we, we would consider it, but you wouldn't need that CDL license to tow. As long as the, the combination of the tow vehicle and, and the yeah. does, it exceed does not exceed 26,000 pounds. And as you mentioned, it can't be in combination, meaning the truck can't be towing it with the wheels of the towed vehicle behind it. Thank you for your hard work on that. No problem. Thank you. Now, we're really lost in the weeds now. Man. No, I, I, I think that actually sheds a lot of light on it. So, um, it may make it complicated for someone out on the road or, you know, to, to get down and evaluate this, but we, we the scenario we just talked about, we have the identical fee for towing a vehicle that's 10,000 pounds or more and your typical car or pickup truck. So that should change. Um, the, uh, the, the no restrictions on the, uh, the stuff in excess of 26,000 pounds that, that doesn't have to change because it, it just has to be, uh, identifiable as far as what the expenses are for that particular one. Uh, a couple other things that I think that are, are not in line are, are the cleanup. Uh, you know, you, you could have a four car wreck or a three car wreck and you, you might need extra personnel out there just to, to clean up an intersection. So, I mean, you could leave it at $35, but it's billable hours based on, you know, what you have to do to clean up. Maybe there's two vehicles are smashing each other and, and there's, there's uh, Gas or oil coming out, gas or oil and antifreeze. All those have to get cleaned up and disposed of properly. And then uh, obviously the, the storage uh, is out of line with everybody else. In my comments. Thanks. Thank you. So, uh, Chief. Sorry, just one more uh, note. I saw that Upper Dublin requires that all tow receipts be forwarded to the police department. Um, is the reason for that just to review and make sure they're in line with our that's, ordinance? Yeah, that correct. That's why Upper Dublin has that in their ordinance. That way they're making sure that they're following the ordinance as far as the, the fees right. are concerned. So that might not be a bad idea. It doesn't mean the police department has to review every single one, but... They would be, if they'd be on, they would be on file here if that was adopted. So. so I'll leave that up to what you think. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I get where Kevin's coming from, you know, with our license or whatever. We, we can drive up to 26,000, which is a container truck, uh, dumpster truck that we drive. And then my regular work truck, which is a heavy duty pickup, is only 10,000. Two different complete towing. Uh, when you're, if you're going to pick up my 25,000 pound truck, it is more than just our regular pickup. And I think that's where he was going with this. 
as far as weight pulling, picking up and all that, it's a different toe. Uh, as far as uh, I feel, Abington's right there, not too much different than ours. I think we should just stay with Abington. Yeah, you know, with their numbers. Yeah, you know, they do get more for that uh, 10 to 26,000 pounds. They get $50 more. Uh, and in, I think that $50 is worth it if I have my container dumped, uh, my big uh, dumpster on it uh, and you got to tow it. Yes, it does take a lot more, a bigger truck uh, to do it safely. As far as over that, they're $2,225. We don't have a restriction on that. Uh, Abington has the 225. Upper Dublin has a restriction of 425. We could be, we could do a restriction there uh, of one of the others. And then $45 a day for storage. Abington's 50. At birth, 75. Horsham's 50. Uh, Upper Dublin's 50. It should probably be 50 uh, as far as that, since everybody else is that. And cleanup, it's hard. This is a tough one just to know because for 35 hours, this could be on their normal. Every time they pick something up, they, they might just add this. Uh, but on the other hand, if it is Collision, yeah, it could take an extra 25 minutes or so. So I, I'm not, everybody else is well, $45, $50. I like, Ab, I, I just stick with Abington's and get right across the board with them, is my opinion. Anthony, sir? Yes. Yeah, just a quick question. I don't know if anybody can answer this, but are we seeing any reduction in services or response times because of our fees or because of our no restrictions on the heaviest weights? Are we seeing, because we have the turnpike and things like that, faster response times to, to get here and help no. clear up? Nothing? They're okay. there within 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, good. So, all right. I'm all for adjusting the fees, of course, to be um, reasonable with our, our neighbors, but was wondering if we had any changes in service. So, uh, commissioners, to be uh, making an adjustment. Well, I just want to understand one point. So, uh, the they not reported to the police. These incidents aren't reported to the police to make sure that they're being charged appropriately. If they're not reported to us, or are they? We're the ones that, when we respond, we notify the tow, and that's when it's when it's a police tow. It's regulated by the ordinance. If they're doing private tows, we don't have any regulations on that. Right. So you're proposing you want an ordinance amendment? You're saying you need. That's what was brought before us. Oh, if yeah. you read right, if you read the ordinance, it's the board that. No, 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 so you can't just commit. You need an ordinance amendment. Correct. Correct, on, based on what uh, Commissioner McFatridge has recommended. Right. So that's what we're recommending. Ordinance. Yeah. Amend. A change to the ordinance. Amend. Amend. The ordinance. Amend. Okay. Your office does that, right, Sean? Yes, we would work with Chief to look at that. Okay, so hopefully by the next meeting, the meeting after that, we'll have the ordinance amendment. Do we have that? Yeah, you would have then a draft ordinance that would have to be advertised. Would it be the November meeting then? November meeting. Okay. okay. Any other questions from commissioners or from the public? Okay. If not, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, what, what? The commissioners met in executive session prior to tonight's meeting uh, for personnel matters. That's all. Thank you. Visitor, visitor comments? Visitors comments. Okay. Yes, we did. Okay, any visitors comments? No, okay. Now we're adjourned. Thank you. Good to see you again.